Hello, welcome to Watercolor Wednesday this week. We're going to be painting a winter landscape. So let me show you very quickly. This is what we're going to be attempting to paint today. I might take some liberties and simplify things quite a bit. But this is kind of where I'm starting with my inspiration. I found this by searching winter landscape on pixabay.com. It's a new website to me. Very exciting. And then I've got three brushes here. I'm going to start with my size 20 round. If you just have a large brush, that'll work perfect. And then I have a size 12 and a size 6. All round brushes. They're kind of my brush of choice. And I'm going to start by painting that blue, blue gray sky. And so I'm starting by just getting some water on my palette and then pulling in some blue. And let's see, a little bit of neutral tint. Just want to make it more of a gray tone. And then to mute this down a little bit because it's still feeling a little bit too blue, too vibrant, I'm going to add in a little bit of this brilliant orange. That's just going to make it feel a little bit more gray. So I've got gray here. Now I'm going to mix that blue. I'll show the picture again in a minute. This is Vertiter, Vertiter blue. I'm not really sure how to pronounce that, but it's a nice, like, kind of a sky blue color. And then here, let me show you really quick. So this is, these are the colors I'm trying to match a little bit. So I've got my gray up here, I've got the blue, and then I need kind of a yellow, pink, orange also. I run the risk of having this look really muddy too because blue and orange cancel each other out. And so I wanna make sure I'm adding a little bit of pink in there just in case. and because I love pink. <laughs> okay, so to get started, I'm just going to focus on the sky and it starts out pretty blue. I'm gonna water this down quite a bit. I'm just gonna start here. And I'm not too worried about getting it perfectly even because I'm using a uh, Arches cold press paper and Arches is really good because you get a more seamless blend. Kind of interchanging now into that gray. it starts to get a little more of that pink in there. Right now I just want to get some color down and then we can kind of play with it after that. Let's see, I'm going to use isoindolin yellow. This is a really nice warm yellow orange. And then it goes to almost white because it's so bright down here at the bottom. And then after the sky, we've got kind of a, a snowy look down here. Let's 
So I know it doesn't look like much now. It, <laughs> this may go south or it could work out. We'll see. We don't know unless we try. And if we try and fail, that just means we have more to learn, right? So I'll start there and just wait for that to dry slightly. I don't want to wait too long just because I want to add some kind of cloud details up here. So I added a bit more of that neutral tint into that color, the gray I already had. I'm just kind of dabbing that in here. The other fun thing we can do uh, when we're in this stage, when it's kind of still damp and, you know, we want to get some definition for some clouds is I like to grab either a dry brush or I'm going to use a, let's see, just like a little rag that's dry and just go in here and kind of pick up some of that paint and that's just going to make it well it's going to blend a little bit and it's also going to bring out some of that white for the clouds I don't want to go crazy And then we can kind of push the, the darker parts that we want. We can add more gray later. Let's just kind of soften things up just a little bit. And I know it does not look like much right now. <laughs> it's okay. All right, so let me show that picture again. So you can kind of see where I'm going with this a little bit. We've got the blue gray sky going into that pink, orange, yellow, and then back down to that blue grayish tone. Watercolors are a little bit tricky. Oh, it's pronounced Verditer blue. Yeah. yeah, I have no idea. So Verditer. That's the color of blue. I knew I wasn't pronouncing it right. <laughs> I was pretty proud of myself when I learned how to say isoindolin. So here, I, as I'm adding this gray, I don't want it to be the very darkest point because I'm going to have these trees down here that are going to look really dark. And so I'm just adding a little bit of definition here. I don't want to add too much because I don't want it to take away from the trees that are going to be happening over here. Just a little bit. kind of a little experiment slash dance. Add a little, take a little away, add a little more, take a little away until you're kind of happy with it. And I'm, I'm kind of happy with this. So I'm going to move on and we're going to add the horizon line next. And because it is so dark, I'm going to mix a new color. This is neutral tint again. And here's a tip for getting a really rich color when you're mixing. You want to 
wet your paint beforehand. If you are trying to mix from a dry paint, you're not going to pick up a ton of paint and it's everything's just gonna look really soft and light, which there's nothing wrong with that. But if you want a bold color, just wet your paint, give it a minute to soak, and then you'll have a really easy time picking up a lot of paint. Okay, I wanna make sure this is fairly dry before I start setting down this horizon line here. My son and my niece are playing upstairs. <laughs> so if you can hear what sounds like uh, some dogs maybe, that's what that is. Oh, we got a little bit of that teal blue in there. That's okay. Got some shadow happening here now. And okay, now I'm going to focus on this little, it's kind of a river bend almost. Right over here. So you can see the big trees on the left and that little bend. That's what I'm going to be focusing on next. Picture is still up. Goodness. Here we go. I'm gonna whoops. I'm gonna hide that again.
Hey guys, oh beautiful. Can you go back upstairs for a minute? Oh, thank you. That's beautiful. <laughs> Showing me their their puppies are wearing some some bows that they've in my wrapping paper dash. <laughs> Kids are the best. Okay, now I want to wait just a second for this area to dry before I try and add more trees or shrubs or anything like that. So let's see, I'll add a little bit of shadow here. A little bit over there too. Okay. Snow is tricky because you think it's going to be just white or just gray, but there are actually a lot of colors in it because it reflects all the light and all the color around it. So it's kind of fun to play with. We'll wait for that to dry. In the meantime, I can answer any questions you have about watercolor or anything. You can tell me about your holidays. And then as soon as this is dry, I'm going to add those trees. Let's see. So we're kind of on track here. We've got that little river stream and the mountains and the clouds. And obviously mine looks quite different just because this is my interpretation of it. But that's where we're at right now. Yes, the sweet little child voices. <laughs> I am trying to appreciate them while I'm in this stage of life. And so, yeah, we're, we're going to have a full day of playing after I'm done with this. It's going to be fun. I'm going to keep checking that. I used to have a little blow dryer down here that I could just quickly dry things, but it broke on me and I haven't purchased a new one yet. So I'll just have to wait. It's almost there. Like it's on the damp side. But I don't want to, oh, goodness. I don't want to add anything really and have it blue everywhere. I'd rather just wait. So I'm going to get my colors ready. I'm using a lot of tint. I really like it. It's from uh, Daniel Smith. 
which if you've been following me for a while, you know that Daniel Smith is my go-to watercolor brand for two paints anyway. I love it. It's just a beautiful brand. All the colors, they all seem to be like very pigmented. They stay wet longer. So that's why I tend to reach for those. I'm actually going to grab a smaller brush too. Let's see what I've got right here. This is a size two for some of these little tiny twigs that are up front here. Okay, and I think they're probably good to add some of those. I'll add some more shadow in here first, just to be safe. And what are your goals for 22? Do you have goals? Or are you just continuing with what you've been working on? I've set a goal to start being serious about licensing my artwork. And so I'm going to be building my licensing portfolio which I'm very, very excited about. It's been on my radar for a long time, and I'm excited to finally start on it. Hopefully that will. Okay. This is where I'm a little nervous because it's such a large element that I'm adding, but we're just going to go for it. It's all good. There are kind of a lot of branches happening over here. And so I'm just going to try and choose some to focus on and, and add things in where I need to.
I just heard my niece say, this is a boring day. <laughs> I'm so sorry, honey. Sometimes that just happens. But we're going to have fun. Goodness. <laughs> you okay, hun? Oh, that's a pick it up, all right. You want a treat? Do you want to make a treat today? Yeah, I made a treat today. Okay, wait till I'm finished and then we can make a treat. I'm, I'm we're done and we're tired. <laughs> hey, hey, Mom, should we play restaurant, Lucy? Yeah, restaurant. Okay, we can play restaurant. Yeah, you are the guy that gives us out our food through the window. And then Lucy and me are the customers. Okay. Woohoo! All right, so I want to add more to this, but I'm going to kind of finish things up for now because today is a boring day. <laughs> And I can tell they're getting a little antsy to do something fun. So I'm going to wrap this up. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next week. Honey, come here, sweetie.